Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at Antix version 19.2.1. I've been looking forward to a new release of this distribution because the last time I looked at it was on a 20 year old Pentium 3. So yeah, Antix is aimed more at running on older computers. And in this one, yeah, actually ran really well, actually a lot better than Tiny Core, uh, partly due to the fact it has more packages pre-installed and I was able to get internet connectivity. So yeah, I was no longer limited to just what I could see on the desktop. So actually was quite impressed with how well it run and it, it doesn't really look too much of a lightweight system at first glance. And despite the fact on the screenshot here, we can see that it was using 64 meg of RAM out of the 256 meg of RAM on the system. So yeah, while the desktop ran very nicely at that uh, with those constraints, uh, running other applications proved uh, somewhat more difficult and time consuming, but that's purely an issue with the very old system and an issue with how modern applications are using more and more memory, particularly with internet access, how browsers want to do far too much this day and age. So Antix is a fast, lightweight, easy to use system D free Linux distribution. It's based on Debian stable, comes with a few different flavors. There's a full version weighing in at 1.1 gig, which comes with LibreOffice pre-installed and uh, quite a few different selections of desktops. I think there was about seven in the list. There's a base distribution, which I'll be looking at in this video, which has uh, well, 700 meg, and that's four different desktop environments, as well as there being a core and a net installer versions. There's 32 and 64 bit versions. So yeah, I'll be looking at the 64 bit version, which has a higher memory usage. Antix is a joint venture with MX Linux, with a lot of the members being from the former Mepis community. MX is more of a midweight distribution, I think that used XFCE, and Antix uses, well, it has a few different options for the desktop environment, which I'll come on to in this video. The layout of the desktop is very traditional with an application launcher in the bottom left hand side, a show desktop button, launcher for a few different applications, there's desktop switcher. On the bottom right hand side, there's shortcuts to the network, volume control, and graphs of the CPU and memory usage. On the desktop, there's a conky widget, which shows a few different statistics about the operating system. So if we want to see the memory usage here in this 64-bit version, we can see it is 138 meg. So a bit over double the 32-bit version. Although my system here is not as constrained as the old Pentium 3 based system. Antix feels really snappy and responsive. It's very quick at opening up applications. Yeah, just blink and it opens. I suppose it does help that they're all very lightweight applications installed on the system. Although I've installed Abbey Word separately as a bit of testing. The choice of applications is very suitable for the distribution. We also have a few other custom tools, which I'll take a look at now. For example, we have the Antix Updater, which is a GUI application. But there's also a mixture of terminal applications as well. So if I look at the well, CLI apt based package manager. So yeah, a terminal based package manager. Now I can imagine that would be very useful for a system severely constrained on resources. Or if you just really like using a terminal, you can navigate around this way. What I do have to say though, it is uh, rather cumbersome navigating around like this. I mean, nice idea of what they've done. So we've got uh, some highly rated applications to install. The concept of it is very nice. Yeah, it's very fast responsive, I suppose, as you would expect from a terminal application. <laughs> is it a pleasure to use though? Uh, no, not really. Fortunately, there is a GUI alternative for a package installer. And it seems the choice of applications is very much appropriate for the operating system. For example, looking here under file managers, PC Man FM, yeah, that's a good alternative because why would I want the option of installing Nautilus on here, which would bring in a whole load of dependencies that I don't necessarily want on a lightweight operating system. There is some more choice on browser, which is reasonable, yeah. Games, few simple games on there. So it's not a complete list, but yeah, you do have the other option of using apt get install or apt install. As I mentioned earlier, there's a few different choices of desktops here. So I have a choice of four different desktops, although it's actually more of a list because there's minimized versions of the desktop. So just a slightly different layout. The default is ice window manager, and I should also mention it uses the slim login manager. Yeah, so we've got ice window manager, 
Fluxbox and Joe's Window Manager. So it's really easy to switch between the different desktop environments. Memory usage does change a little bit, but overall it wasn't really too much. So just go for Fluxbox, which is a, quite a bit of a different layout here. Your choice for whichever desktop you want to use. I'm going to go back to the default. I was a little bit disappointed with the file manager. I can see it's a very lightweight file manager, but um, kind of lacking on features. For example, how would I connect to SSH? So yeah, there's something here with connect to shares, but I, I, I found a way around what I was trying to do in the end. I did get some files into here. Stumbled across a bit of a bug here in that it expects the default Office Manager to be LibreOffice, but I installed Abbey Word just because I wanted a lightweight system. The news app select, uh, I think there was, well, this is the searcher. Alternative configurator, alternative uh, system default alternative. So yes, that would seem a logical place as well. And yes, I can see file extensions listed here, but not LibreOffice. So maybe I am missing something which does seem to be obvious, but not from what I'm seeing anyway. Navigating around the file system here. Yeah, that is very quick and responsive. Really is suited for a lightweight system. I did try looking at some of the included help files and I thought, oh, there's an anti-x video here. That'd be nice to look at. And oh, you've not got the extension right there. HTTP colon forward slash user share. No, you should really be file colon forward slash, but even then the file doesn't exist. Whoops, there's a mistake there. And I didn't think I was trying really hard to find missing pages, but I did seem to stumble across a couple in the help file. And yeah, okay, some do exist, and but it does seem a very convoluted help file to navigate. Why the big space at the top? But otherwise it is nice they've included some help files on the system. I'll take a look at this app killer feature. So if you've got a misbehaving application, you can literally just select the app killer and click on the application. But what happens when you select the desktop? Oops, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Don't mind me while I just log back in again from having just uh, killed the desktop. It had to be done really, uh, but it's only the taskbar. If you click anywhere else in the desktop background, um, nothing happens. There's a control center on here, customized look and feel, and there's a massive amount of themes on here. Just. <laughs> It really is quite a lot. I mean, I'm impressed. They've included the option for dial-up and ADSL configuration. That's a good feature to include for older computers. There's some form of blocking here. Although I noticed they're using the slash etc slash host file and uh, well, depending how many domains you place in the etc host file, it can actually slow the computer down. Very inefficient way of doing that form of blocking. Better to use a DNS server. Lots you can do here. I've got the option to install the NVIDIA drivers, the Windows wireless drivers, Codex installer. And in terms of the applications here, well, I installed Kate for a bit of testing, but otherwise it is a very lightweight assortment of applications. You've got a choice of two browsers. You've got the Firefox extended support release and Dillo. Well, Dillo is a very lightweight browser. It was the only browser that managed to work on my old Pentium 3 computer, but does it really work? Uh, no, not really. That does struggle with compatibility, or I'm guessing uh, CSS3. But the option is there should you need it. There was no Office application included with the version I downloaded, but the larger 1.1 gig version does include LibreOffice. Yeah, the preferences, programming, system, there's all various options here. So I have to say for a lightweight Linux distribution, this is really nice. It's not like I'm left with nothing here. I actually have a fully usable system, albeit not as fancy as some of the other desktops, but it is functional. So that was a look at Anti-X. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. <laughs>